for us, this has provided a really exciting opportunity to have a discussion so, so shortly after the SDGs in September, but more importantly, the Paris Agreement in December. And so many of us countries have been grappling with what does it mean for implementation? And in the case of Nigeria, we have enormous challenges and how can we take the opportunity um, of, of addressing some of the root causes? Uh, deforestation in my country is huge and what we have to do is to find the alternatives to why that's happening, whether it's for fuel wood or it's lo illegal logging. All of that we have to contend with and, and I think alternatives is what this, this whole meeting has been about. Um, on the other hand, we have um, desification and in, in sense the desification in Nigeria has caused uh, the drying up, climate change, exacerbated issues of conflict in the northeast with Boko Haram. Um, we need to recharge Lake Chad that used to be you know, so much more than it is today, at least as a child. I go across that on a hovercraft and think I was going to England. Today, it's a puddle. And I think, you know, it's a stark contrast of, of uh, before and now. Um, what do we do to put that all back together? I think first, um, really engaging people, um, that this is good for everyone. It's good for business. It's good for rights. It's good for young people. It's good for jobs. Um, and so we use our program like the African Union Initiative of the Great Green Wall to introduce more trees, economic, um, at scale. Uh, we look down to the south and we see that it's also a question of um, rebirthing our forests, managing them better, uh, looking at them for carbon sequestration. If we wanted to um, put that at the front, we would do that. Uh, so I think in achieving the, the SDGs, we see this as one goal, that is our docking station and all other 16 feed into that and feed out of it. And, and I think that that's what makes it special, is that you can see um, the issue of stronger institutions to support scale. You can see the partnerships that you need for funding. Um, at the same time, you go through the social sector and the rights for women and equality, uh, but you can industrialize, you can attend to climate change. So all in all, I think these are exciting times and to have that discussion here. Uh, to see from different countries what they're trying to do, um, that we are responding, not just prescribing. And, and I think that's, that's, that's really good news. Well, we're living it. Um, when I walked into the Ministry of Environment uh, as the minister a few months ago, um, from the north to the south of my country, I can talk about three distinct conflicts that um, I think we see the solution is investing in the environment. So the first one I mentioned to you in the north, where we have the Sahara and the desert coming in um, at rates that are just not viable or sustainable, but we also have Boko Haram. And Boko Haram, uh, for us, um, is something that we've got uh, within control now in terms of um, stopping and trying to reverse uh, the terrorism there. But we have to rebuild that part of the country, and, and that is in, in desert and dry land. And, and so how do, we, how do we address that and replenish, as I said, the Lake Chad? But then I come to the rest of the country and there are tensions which have created enormous conflict between our pastoralists and our farmers because the land that was there before is no longer there. And you have to find the dialogue and you have to find the alternatives to make that also sustainable. So smart agriculture, um, but also working integrated way with pastoralists. Uh, come down to the south of my country, again, it's the Niger Delta, it's oil, we're the one commodity economy right now, but we're trying to diversify. Um, and that's conflict again, and it's pollution, and it's, you know, we see mangroves and we see forests being depleted at rates that are also not viable. So if we can find, as we are now, beginning the cleanup um, uh, with the UNEP report that we have for the Niger Delta, then we see um, what do we put in place to stay clean. I clean today, what are the alternatives for young people? And so today, speaking with the DG about fisheries um, and about what we can do uh, to encourage people, especially young people, to go into that. I think it's very important that we don't just see this as a question of numbers. Um, you know, there is no country that can fly on half an engine. And if you don't invest in the other half, it's not going anywhere. And, and that's the case of our women. Uh, we need to invest to get those potentials. And, and we have value to add in being a part of uh, the partnership that you need for growing our economies. Now, that has to happen in discussions. It has to happen in policy rooms. It has to happen where we are um, at the table doing the work. Um, and I think that we're still far from that. I, I often um, I referred today just to a panel that was discussing um, criteria and measurements, indicators for success, 
not to have women at that table is a big problem because you know innately they understand um, multitasking and so they can look at different dimensions all at once. That whole DNA approach to things um, is something women do really well. So I think women in decision making, I think that what we do, we need to look at results in their lives because that's a reflection of the quality of lives in the family, in the society, um, what sort of children we'll be producing as we go forward. It's one thing to have a child, it's another one to nurture it and to give it the education, the health, the learning that it needs to be um, a, a really wonderful part of society, which, which we, I think many children are deprived of today. So I think the role of women um, has got to stop being just that percentage or that number. I think it takes away um, the, the, the need to, to see why it is that we should be there. I and mean, it's not charity, it's a right, it's better for everyone. Um, it's certainly a plus, I think, for humanity.